over a year ago when I was put into the heavyweight Grand Prix, all of a sudden diet became less important. I always had to exercise, but diet and what I actually weighed became less important. And now I was forced to use a level of discipline to try to control my weight, balancing that with the fact that I'm going to be in there with heavyweights, which then of course leads a person instantly to logically believe they need to get a little bit bigger. At any rate, what I found out about myself is I was not as disciplined as I had given myself credit for. I had realized that I always lived in a life of structure, a certain level of structure, having that way in front of me, whether it was through amateur wrestling or it was through professional prize fighting. But I had that scale. I had that contract. I had that finish line. And those were things that helped to keep me within the lanes of what I am calling discipline. So for about a year, I have wanted to lose 20 pounds and maybe just short of that, but right, right around 20 pounds. And I just simply haven't done it. And I've exercised, I go to practice, I do my two a days, and then I started eating a little bit healthier and I would go on diets, you know, sporadically, whether it was healthy eating or whether it was the no carb diet, all these different fads that you would hear about there. And I would try them all and I would mix them all in. And just recently I was on a diet for only three days, but I was on, I was on a diet for three days. Uh, and in that three day period, I got on the scale and I had gained three pounds, which I do not think is physiologically possible, but I can tell you what the number of the scale read before that 72 hour period. And after that 72 hour period, and while standing on the scale and looking at that number, I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. No more diets. I'm done. I am not eating again until I weigh 214 pounds. I will not have another bite of food. I am on a hunger strike. The longest I had ever gone without food in my life was 36 hours, a day and a half. And I had to do that. I actually, I actually hit that, that 36 hour point a few times in my life, but never exceeded it. I am currently at 72 hours right now. 72 hours and can, well, I'm looking at the clock. I'm a little closer to 80 hours. So I'm in day number four, and I would estimate that I will not need any more than 10 days, possibly as few as seven. The problem that I've ran into is I was planning to combine not only this fast, but then with heavy amounts of water intake to go by Mike Dolce's standard, a gallon a day, and then also have a third prong of this, which was exercise. What I have ran into, and I think it's relates back to my voice that you're hearing right now and this little bit of a, a cold that apparently I have is I wasn't able to drink the water. My body just didn't want it. And I haven't been able to go to the gym because I don't want to get my teammates sick. So I lost two of the three prongs in the approach. However, I have not been on a scale. I will get on one tomorrow, which will be at day five. But I can just tell you from my genes that I am losing weight. How much? I don't know. I'm guessing I'm down about seven pounds here in day four. So I, I got a little bit of time to go. And I think I really could have sped that up with the water intake and the exercise. But that's what I am doing. And I am surprisingly uncranky. I had read a lot about this from other people. Joe Rogan talks about fasting a lot. But his idea of fasting is up to two days and then you eat again. Khabib talks about fasting. He does it for one day a week. But if you go to the internet, you can find all sorts of dialogue. One thing for people who have done long fasts, and most of them did fasts not for the reason that I'm doing it, which was an absolute frustration with the mathematical equation of calories in versus calories out and the scale showing you something else. They were doing it largely for cleanses. They would do like a 10-day fast in conjunction and then most of them were doing uh, this cleanse that involved high amounts of water, lemon juice, and cayenne pepper. I don't know if you guys have heard about that one. It's a very popular one. It's been out there for a meaningful period of time. The relevance that I gained from this is everybody unanimously was commenting on after day three, you sail. After day three, the hunger pains, the cravings, the attitude, the lack of energy, that it all goes away, that your body begins to adjust and this is just the way that things are going to be. And that's essentially when your body begins to cannibalize and eat itself because you're not giving it any other form of energy. And I was also curious about that. 
So many people were weighing in. So many people had that experience. I want to say, okay, is that going to be my experience? And I will tell you, as I am in day four, yeah, I think that's right. I think right about, day three was the easiest day. And it wasn't an easy day, but it was the easiest. Day two was easier than day one. Day one was the hardest. And I do feel that I'm just kind of on autopilot. I spent day three largely just fantasizing about food. Staring at a calendar, looking at where I would be because I'm about to get on a plane. About to go out to Australia for the pay-per-view this weekend. Going to watch Kelvin Gatslum specifically and support him in his pursuit of a world championship. But in the, in the process of doing that, I was looking, where am I going to be? All right, I'm going to be in Australia. I'm going to be in a hotel. Then all of a sudden, I'm going to the hotel that I'm going to be at online. And I'm looking up what food they have. How late is room service? Oh, I got this whole thing worked out. Now, I'm not thinking about it at all. I am not craving anything. I would tell you, I think I am hungry. I think if I had my, if I got on the scale right now, I met my goal, the 20 pounds was gone. I would go get something to eat, but I couldn't tell you what. Every fight that I've ever had, where I've had to fast or not eat or eat less or a combination of all of those things, I could tell you exactly what I wanted. And it was the same thing every time. I wanted a club sandwich with extra mayonnaise, french fries, a side of ranch, and a Coca-Cola big enough to swim in. Right now, I don't have any of that. Which I think does relate to the psychology and the physiology, quite fairly, that other people had also observed and talked about that once you pass day three, you do kind of cruise. Now, how long can I carry that? I don't know. I wouldn't suggest for you that I don't eat again. I will suggest for you that at some point, I am going to have to either reach my goal or I am going to have to succumb to natural human survival, which says you got to go eat some food. At any rate, I thought it was an interesting story. And I will tell you, and I think of myself as a very good dieter, not only from reading it, not only from reading books on this, not only from helping other people, but as a very good guinea pig myself. I may wait more times than anybody I know that isn't in this world. As, as an amateur wrestler, I had to weigh in once a week for competition, sometimes twice a week for competition. So I lived a little bit of a unique life there, but for whatever reason, my physiology is just not mad. I don't know if that's with age. I don't know if my metabolism has slowed down, if the rules change. I don't know. But I know I was frustrated and I gave up and said to hell with it all. I do not believe logically it is humanly possible to gain any level of weight without eating things, anything. So here I am.